Hello, this is Tyler with Diesel Laptops. We are here today to talk about our diagnostic trouble codes and how to solve the problems. How do you fix them once you have a code? Where do you go for information? All very good questions. So first of all, on our Cummins ECM, and if you look here on the ECU Info tab, we're hooked up to an ISB 2150. And as I go through here, we'll see that we have red codes that are ATT, which means active. And if I scroll down here, I can show you a yellow one that says MEM, so that's an inactive code. So how do we fix the codes? Great question. First of all, let's just talk about the icons on the right hand side. Every single code will have this circle with a question mark inside of it and it's this reddish orangish color. Every code on every truck you connect to will have that. What it is is it's a new feature that Texa will be having eventually. It's called Solve Problems. So I hold my mouse over this so you can see what it's called. Solved Problems. And what that will be is a, another subscription that you can purchase if you wish, where Texa will give you more advanced repair information for those codes. The problem is, is they added the button, the database is really, really thin, and there's no real point in us trying to sell it to you or trying to have you buy it at this point. Let's talk about some other options because we have a lot of great options to fix these codes. So the bare minimum option you can have is if I click on it, you'll see there's different icons on this one. There's one with a gray question mark or a white question mark. So if I go down here to help, I can click on that and it'll tell me a little bit about that code. That one doesn't have very much. Let's go check this one here with the real time supply clock. Let's click on that guy. Oh, all right, so we get some better information in there. Nothing too crazy telling us how to fix the problem. And most of the codes don't have the problems. And that's okay because we have all the tools on your laptop to do that. So very first thing you need to do on a code is double click it. And we're going to get a couple things here. So right away we have our flash code. We also have our PID and our FMI. PIDs and SPNs and PPIDs and all these crazy acronyms. Those are things that any generic little handheld scanner are going to give you. The real benefit with the tool is the fact that we have actual error codes, our actual flash codes that the dealers use. You can Google PID 91 FM4 all day long. You're probably going to have a hard time finding anything. I guarantee if you go into Google, type in Google uh, Cummins ISB code 132, probably a bunch of stuff's going to come up. But we're not going to really use Google. We have a lot better stuff on here. So let's hit the confirm button and let's go and try to see what we can do with this code. So very first tool we have on here is called DTC Solutions. This is a program that only Diesel Laptops has. It's the only one we offer it. It's a program we made ourselves because customers want quick and dirty repair information. So I go down here and I select Cummins. Then I go over to Diagnostic Trouble Codes. I just know from experience this engine's listed here in the 2010 through 12. And we have code 132, as you may recall. So I'm going to go down here to code 132 and click on it. And you'll see there's our SPN and PID and FMI and all the other junk. And we also have our description. And as I can read through this code, it's going to give me some possible causes and some possible repairs on what to do. So it's a nice, quick, easy way to find what you're looking for to get you in the ballpark. If you want more detailed information, very easy to do. We have a program called Knowledge Base. If I go into Knowledge Base, and we'll let it load up here. And this is our way of organizing manuals much, much easier. So as I click in here, we have this one called Cummins. So let's click on Cummins. And then let's click on our ISB 6.7 that we have. And now let's click on DTCs. So as you recall, the code we had was code 132. So I'm going to scroll down here to code 132. I'm going to double click it. And it's going to open a PDF that has code 132. Uh, not only is it going to have your wiring diagrams, circuit description, all that information. If I scroll way to the bottom of this guy, this is where you'll start seeing our troubleshooting steps. So the steps will just walk you through, check this. If, if that, then hit yes or no and you just work your way down through the repair procedure until you get to your exact issue. So all the repair information you need for these engines is loaded on here. I'm actually going to go back one folder because I also want to show you that we have wiring diagrams on here as well. So I'll click on wiring diagrams and I'll open this one up and you will see that we do have the wiring diagrams in here as well. So there's wiring diagrams for your Cummins ISB engine. So we also have wiring diagrams inside the Texa as well. So let me go back to Texa here for a second. And oh, wrong icon, this one here. So when I click on these, the one icon I did not show you is the little diode button. So if I click on this little diode button uh, icon looking thing for component wiring diagrams, 
what it'll do is it will actually pull up the wiring diagram for that engine and it'll start blinking lights and tell me which sensor to go look at. So they have their own built-in wiring diagrams in the Texas system as well and we have them available with our knowledge base program too. So with all that said, that's the, the real quick on a Cummins and then we're going to do a little cutscene here and I'm going to go connect to another engine so we can show you, you another way to get codes as well. All right, we're back again after that short little break, and I'm actually hooked up to a 2013 and newer Volvo engine. I thought that'd be a good one to do. Volvo stuff is typically kind of hard and difficult and uh, not the easiest stuff to find repair information on. So I'll show you what the Texa can do. So first of all, we have all our codes here, and as you can see, there's, again, different icons highlighted. Uh, this one in particular, engine oil pressure too low. We got the red and we got the white. Let's hit the uh, white one here. And it's going to tell us some reasons why that could possibly be happening. If I click back, and again, we have a wiring schematic on here. So let's take a peek at that. And it's asking us what emission level we have. So let's hit that one. And it loads up the diagram, it gives us a nice blinky sensor, uh, allowing us to see what's going on in that wiring diagram. So we can do a little bit better than that. Let's go back and let's double click that code. And we have P052400. So let's go into DTC Solutions and see if we can get a little more information on this low oil pressure and what could be causing it. So again, we'll go into DTC Solutions, we'll go to Volvo, and we'll go over to the 2013 emission level. And we see our list over here. Let's make sure we have this sorted nice and neat by P codes. And let's scroll down to P05244. So there are literally thousands of codes for Mac and Volvo same exact engine e uh, electronic stuff going on with it. So there's our P052400 code, engine oil pressure circuit too low. So great, so we have some better information in here. It tells us conditions for setting it low, what symptoms you would see, and some causes you would go to fix it. So we probably have a little bit more information in here as well. Uh, let's go look at probable cause. Let's, let's, say you had, let's say you did have a worn oil pump and you had to replace the pump or the pump but it's a bit of an issue with it. So let's go see what we can do with that. So let's go over here to the knowledge base and on knowledge base we'll show you what we kind of have for Volvo. So let's scroll down here to Volvo and it's going to say do you want to work on engines or trucks? We'll do engines and this is a D13 engine and on here you'll see we have a bunch of different remove and replace instructions as well in this tool. So let's go down here to oil pump hopefully we'll be have it in here oil cooler, oil pump. All right, so let's just double click it and it should pull up our PDF that will have all the repair information that we could need on our uh, oil pump for this particular vehicle. So there it is, oil pump replacement instructions. It's gonna walk you through the special tools you might need, all the exact directions, step-by-step, -step, torque settings, what bolts to take out, all that good information. All right, so that is the how to troubleshoot on a Volvo. Thank you for watching. All right, well, this is Tyler back again one last time. You know, I couldn't leave it just at that. I thought it'd be good if we talk about Caterpillar because Cat is a little more difficult than the other ones, as you'll see. Uh, Cat did a weird thing with their nomenclature, how they name things. There's the C15, C-15, there was a bridge engine, an A-cert. But let's go over to the ECU info tab and as we click on this, we, what we want to look for is the engine serial number. So the very, very bottom here where it says engine serial number had that KCB on there. Um, you'll obviously, right there, right at the very bottom, KCB 12476. That's important to know because that's how all the troubleshootings kind of derive for Caterpillar. So if we go back to our fault code screen over here, we can see all our active fault codes. We'll check out this coolant temperature voltage high and we get our code 110. FMI3 counter one. So we have our code now, we have our KCB prefix, and what we want to do is just go through and just try to find this in the troubleshooting that we have. So I'm going to pull up DTC solutions, and I'm going to go in here, and let's go pull up Caterpillar, and let's go try to find the correct engine. So I already know this is a C13 engine, and there's one that says all others, and one says SDP or LE. Those are the prefixes. Where, where's ours is KCB, it's not SDP or LEE, so it's all others. So let's click on that guy there. And when it loads, you'll see there's additional information where it tells you what engine serial numbers we're taking a look at for coverage. 
So that's great. We have our correct one pulled up now. And you'll see there's also fault codes, PIDs, SPNs, and FMIs. CAT can have three different codes for the same flash code. So you see 000 actually is three different things. And let's go down the list here and find another one. There we go, code 46. You can see that's actually two different codes as well. But let's go find the one that we had. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda go to the top here. And what we can do is we can actually sort these different columns. So I'm gonna sort the SPN columns so I can find what I'm looking for a little bit easier. And I got another numerical order. I'm just gonna go down the list. I'm gonna look for the code that I had. And right there is 110 FMI4011 and three. So that's our code right there, 110 FMI3. And obviously that's where we ended up with in the DTC solutions. So you can see we get the same description. And if I go down here, we can learn a little more about the code and where we need to go to look at it. So that is how you kind of cross check those things, especially when you have multiple fault codes, flash codes that could actually be the same thing. So that's why Texas uses that SPN and FMI. But now we'll go into knowledge base and try to find a little more information. So let's click on Caterpillar. And again, the same menu options, the all others is what we're looking at. Let's double click into, yeah, there's the one that SCP and LEE, not the one we want, we want all others. So we click into that and now we get our three menus, DTCs, service manners, wiring schematics. There's our DTC. And again, we're sorted by those SPN FMI codes because that's how Caterpillar does it. Uh, so let's go down to 110. Uh, there it is, number three. And we will double click this guy to get it open. And we will have our PDF that talks about all the troubleshooting on this Caterpillar. So there's why the code got set, where you need to go. And we can see right there, we have a code for engine temperature sensor open. It says go to this diagnostic procedure. So we kind of have to flip through the common, the I'm sorry, the cat manuals, just as we normally would. So let's go into service manuals. And here now we can find all these other areas to go into. The electronic shovel shooting is where you'll find all those, um, I'm sorry, wrong area right there. Diagnostical functional test is what we're looking for. This is where all those commands and tests that you might see referenced on codes to go into there. So we'll just go ahead and click on that one and open it up. And you'll see this now has your detailed troubleshooting for sensors, wiring schematics, component locations pin locations on the harnesses, step-by-step -step, uh, troubleshooting trees for your codes. So everything's in there. Uh, we can go through a couple more of these. Wiring schematics is another great example. Here's our wiring diagram. And this will pull up the complete wiring diagram for that CAD engine. And as you can see, we can click on different pages. We're only zoomed in 20%, going all the way, so you can actually find everything you're looking for. So there we go. That is the troubleshooting for a CAT. Thank you for watching.